What's up, timekeepers? Me, Tom Gary here. We're going to be trying out this little demo called A Case of Distrust. So, if ready, I'm ready. Time to roll the intro. Alright, guys, so today I'm going to be trying out this small little demo available on Game Jolt, if I remember correctly. Yeah. A Case of Distrust. This is a small little demo. It's not the full game, but it is a little demo, like I've said four times already. Uh, so, it's sort of an 2D investigation type game. So, Without further ado, we'll just jump right into it and see what's going on in this game, so let's go. Alright, a case of distrust. Doom, 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 doom. Uh, I like this music. I awoke in my desk chair. Oh. I awoke. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a 1920s uh, accent. I awoke in my desk chair. Nope, not, that's not going to happen. Across from me were, were his piercing amber eyes to surprise me at first. But I should have known he's, he'd be there. I stretched and said, Midian, not a very nice to sneak into a sleeping woman's apartment. But his stare just continued. I laughed at his glare. I laughed at his glare. I'd seen San Francisco's true thugs, hardened cops, and deadly politicians. But none could ever match that gaze. I knew I didn't have what it, what he wanted. Reaching into my coat, I took out my knife and flipped it open. I held the knife steady. I held the knife steady while staring back at him. Look, I said, nodding toward the desk. That's all there is. Take it or leave it. But a detective knows when she's beat. And I knew then he wanted to sir search the place and that's what he he would do i sighed knowing my weakness for his type all right i said let's look doom, doom, doom. he loud a gleeful meow in victory i cut a piece of, of my apple that the cat had rejected always the sore winner i jabbed but i was smiling too because i was telling the truth there was absolutely no other food in my apartment all right <laughs> The cat often dropped by to, to scavenge. He made a, a lot of noise when he thought I was holding out on him. But right now, the place was clean, empty. No food anywhere. I had to prove it to him. Alright, so... I had taken copies of old murder cases from the SFPD records when I'd left. I love reading through them, even though my own contributions were minimal. At that time, I longed for those types of jobs. The truth was, any work was hard to find for a female detective. The lamp. <clears throat> that lamp had belonged to my uncle, Louis. He's been an S He'd been an SFPD officer, one who argued policewoman could be good detective, even while the other jeered at him. I knew he'd been right, but my current workload didn't help that claim. I thought about Louis. I thought about Lewis more often than I wanted. I was lousy at handling the emotion behind those thoughts. The Crow I kept a small statue underneath the side table. It had been a police evident in a crime, and someone hadn't wanted it back. I took a shine to it, so I snagged it myself on my way out of the department. The Ashtray Packaged cigarettes were the latest trend, but I still preferred to roll my own. The ashtray was evident that it was a practice skill. I suppose it had a lot of free time back then. Okay. The cat. <clears throat> the cat had waltzed into my apartment a few years earlier. He kept coming back. Though there was rarely a morsel to eat. He continues his loud meowing until I proved to him the place was empty of food. The book. I'll go talk to him after. My old notebook, now filled to the brim, I wrote everything down, even the minor details. I never know what can be useful. The first half had ha had my old cases. Details from the beats I used to walk in my po my policewoman days. Of course, policewomen were forbidden from going on patrol. Police often overlooked that rule. Phone, what is this? Newspaper was flopped on the floor. It's headline about the death. Death of Lenin, leader of the Red Menace, sweeping Russia. It seemed the Bolsheviks had lost their lead, their head. 
the regular white ice box, tinged yellow with age, half blocked the kitchen doorway. My income rarely kept much stocked in it, and right now it was empty. The door to the outside world. If I left now, thought the cat would start wailing so loud I'd get complaints from the neighbor. No, no, he needed convincing before I could leave. Okay, I got notes. Case summary. There was no case just then, but the cat was mewing and needed attention. I had to con contradict the cat by first telling to him, talking to him, then pointing a piece of evidence in my notebook that proved the department was empty of food. Show the cat there's no food. Evidence. Evidence and statement. All right, we're resolving the case of a cat. We're back here to the cat. The cat waltz into the apartment. Okay, talk. It doesn't matter how doe-dyed you are, cutie pie. We're going no food around, I told him. He licked his chops and looked at me. Apparently, he still didn't believe that I needed con to contradict him somehow. To show him something in the apartment. Some to show him something in the apartment that would prove that empty was food contradict let's go go with the ice box would be the most evident the most obvious one the regular white ice box tangelo i opened the ice box so the cat could see inside empty i told him the cat looked quizzic quizzically at the open door then back at me sorry fella there's no grub in there for me either he stared at me with eyes as disappointed as I felt. Those big yellows always got my, to my soul. Thought of my family filled my head. My parents. My parents were still in Chicago where they, they'd move our family in my final years of schooling. I'd returned to California but they maintained that there were better jobs prospect for my father in Chicago. His new gig. His new gig were never permanent. Odd jobs from his brother... Brother's contact. He's been a painter, a mover, a dock hand. Whatever other profession required cheap labor with few questions. But then a drunk rarely kept much work for long. My sister refused. My sister refused any financial aid until my father quit his addiction. Stubbornness and pride caused both sides much grief. And they were no longer on speaking terms. My parents were much worse for it though. Most of their money came from my late grandfather's trust. But those funds were barely a trickle. I often dreamed of saving enough to help them. My mind spiraled into the usual series of questions. Had I even impacted the women's movement? Had I made any change of sight at all? Was my plotting career worth losing traditional happiness? What was the point of, in the life I had chosen? A loud meow from the cat snapped my thought back into the moment. Snapped my thoughts back into the moment. I took a deep breath and grinned back at him. Guess you can scram now, I said. Nobody going to give in. No, nobody's gonna come knocking with food for you, fella. God damn it. There immediately came a banging on the front door beyond a nuisance. The cat was psychic too. You ordered out? I asked him. Open the door. In the doorway was a regrettably familiar face of Connor Green. His company uh I looked. I stared at him, I guess. I stared at him, a hard hand for whoever needed a job done, but Green snitched whenever he was put in a squeeze. Working the beats, I remembered the all too well. Remarkably, the underground had been blind to it. Brun Green wasn't particularly assiduous. He was certain that criminal rank would eventually plug in, plug him. He looked at me through the doorway with a, a coy smile. Well, ain't you gonna invite me inside? Uh, I started closing the door, but I started closing the door, but he stuck his foot in to stop. Hey, now he chid, chid, hell's this word. Okay. Far away to treat a customer Malone. So that was his angle. Hiring me as a detective, I wondered what a bootlegger would need a private eye, but he answered without a prompt. I'll make this quick. I can't take this to the hog house or the pig would laugh me out. And other dicks just aren't as tempting. All right. His grin wind withered. Though this was gonna be quick, I said. I start I started rolling my cigarette. It wasn't quick, and I'd already rolled the light a second smoke when Green finally finished his story. I noted the important bits in my book. 
It had started with a letter slipped under his door in a white envelope. The envelope contained a single typewritten leaf with a he handed to me. It read, End your game or we will end you. It has no signature, instead ending with only a small scribble in the bottom right corner which resembled a black hand. Green had a lead on a new rum-running scheme, a connection from Vancouver. He'd give it a sample to Tiny Paul, the gangster who ran the tin spoon speakeasy from mob boss Jerry Ferry, and they agreed to buy his in for more. Green sur surmised the letter was about him rum-running. He suspected Redstone Stable, another bootlegger, of sending the letter. He told me that Stable ran a barber shop during the day and gave me the address. All right. Green needed to know who the threat was from. He got, he'd got, he get Paul's gang to deal with them and continue his scheme to get rich. If I could go snooping myself, he concluded, folks, see, I'm not trusting people. Uh, no trust leads to no customer. I need to play it low key, which is where you come in. I raised my I raised an eyebrow and start, stared at him through the cigarette smoke. Something is yarn. Yarn was still twisted. He must have noticed my reticence, because he said, "You know, I work closely with Lewis. I'm sure he'd want to protect me as much as any other victim." All right, my uncle. Uh, Lewis had put me on the force. I'd finally accepted Lewis' death. I was still researching for answers. Lewis had put me on, on the force, I guess. Lewis had put me on the force to begin with, made me the first policewoman for the SFPD. He was the only one who'd let me walk the beats with him or do more at crime scene than comfort a widow. He'd been obsessed with helping victims and bringing justice to those beyond salvation. After he'd taken his own life, I'd quit the yeah. after he'd taken his own life, I'd quit the SFPD. There was little more than I could do there. Uh, I started my own practice taking his his edos to heart. Was Green worth my time? Would it be worth Lewis? Worth Lewis? Green had tipped off my uncle in a few cases, wondered if there was enough for warrant my, warrant my protection. Before I could think past my headache, he threw a bill in my lap. Keep the C note as a retainer, and don't worry about getting in touch, I'll find you later for a cat. A chat. Sorry, <laughs> still thinking about the cat, I guess. He turned down the hallway and I let him go. If it, he was willing to give me a hundred bucks with no commitment, I wouldn't stop him. Of course not. I'd be crazy. I turned back to the apartment, still confused about the whole story. My headache, my headache wasn't helping either. Whenever I lacked clarity, I tripped the southern coffee was usually cure. Okay, let's go through the door then. I'd mounted the gold plate on the outside uh, that read PC Malone, private investigator. Leave. There was only one place I needed to go clear my head. Southern Coffee. Southern Coffee was a basement dive. It wasn't modern, hip, or even busy. It was my favorite place to down some paint. Paints. Paint? Okay. Especially in the economy of best bartender in city. Go here. Uh, I gave my address and slotted into the back seat of the taxi cab. I thought a good way to pass the journey might be to chat with the driver. Talk. He was young, not a teenager, but not far off. The redness in his face and mean scowl told me he was angry. Don't much like driving taxi cabs, I offered. He looked qui quizzically at me through the rear view before understanding what I meant. No, lady, I like it right enough. Just some bozo force for you were in here was giving me hell because I looked like a boy his daughter is going with. Went off about how my grand my generation was ruining America. This comeback didn't know Jack. It sounds like, like you know. Sounds like you know more, I asked. I'm no genius, he replied, but you talk any to anyone from the last century, they'll tear off your ear for just being young. How'd they go so high, I wonder, given the world in the 1890s like a smooth-running roadster. Then, what they do, bash it in every curb in sight. Their greed, their war, their politics, now they give us a, run cl a ruined clucker and they're, they're mad at our manners when we grab the keys. I agree. 
I agreed with him. The Great War was the hardest fought. At home and abroad, I said the old man, the old men who put us there had some nerve. He replied hotly. And after those years, they tell us to get in line. It's a bum deal to me, sister. We're in the information age, and the news of the world is crap. They're just angry we can't see their fold. All right. Do, 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 do. This music is really good, I have to say. It's really enjoyable. Uh, the taxi cab rolled to a stop. Anywho, the driver said, Thanks for letting me blow off some steam. Have a nice day, miss. Opened the car door and stepped out. Southern Coffee was an automat, automat diner. Ethel Burgess, the lone waitress, was friendly to help me with any inquiry. Of course, if we winked at her right, she'd show you the way to the downstairs toilet where Frankie played bathroom attendant. Okay. Southern Coffee had a distinct feeling of home. The familiar smell of mold in the old basement was enough to put a grin on my face. Frankie had a, had a bond with the old shaker at the end of this bar. I was surprised he hadn't named it. He could have sling a mean drink, though. He only used a good liquor if he'd like you. Frankie liked me. Good, 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 good. Frankie kept a, a collection of pre-prohibition bottles on the shelf behind the counter. Their shapes and color were far more alluring than opaque jugs of modern swirl, swill. This label showed a rearing horse in front of a forest. I had no idea how a horse related to California's most genuine bourbon whiskey. Though I suppose I did stare at the picture long enough to whet my appetite for a bottle of content. Content of bottle, whatever. Do I have a stool I sit on the most? Probably this one. I grabbed the wine bottle on the bar and examined the label. Uh, it featured the picture of a grape and the world's sacramental use only. Oh, sac sacramental? Okay. Frankie looked at me with a spark in his eye. Go ahead, he said. Give it a swir swig. Mm -mm. Shit, I went too fast. I grabbed the half-empty glass on had been next to the bottle and swirled, swirled its con between my, my gums. A bit spicy, ain't it? Frankie asked. It's good, I nodded. It's good, I nodded. Gulped the rest down. It'll cost you too, he said with a smile and he grabbed the bottle from me, turning it through his hand. Rab rabbis charge more than a nickel for this bottle. Only this type of Napa wine is made from the Sin Sinfendel grape. It has a unique aroma. I'd been trying to learn more about wine. Seemed everyone knew their stuff but me. I nodded at what Frankie had said about the origin of the grape, and he sat the ball back on the bar. Since when do you know grape? Uh, I ch chinned. Frankie let out a be bellied laugh. Some of these grapes are older than you, Malone. I've known about them since I was a small tot. It's why I'm so good at my job, you know. Frankie sighed. Too bad more folks can't taste them. That woman's league is the devil. The woman's Christian temperance. Temperance union was now under feminist France William, a positive force for the temperance of women, but her staunt support of prohibition, along with the union's massive political clout, irked a very wet San Francisco public, and she particularly wasn't popular with bartenders. Makes sense. Take a seat, he said. I'll mix you something else. He was a big fella, had been a decent pitcher. He was a fantastic orator. Uh, he was a fantastic orator, but he knew when to be a good ear, too. For my money, there hasn't even been, nor will there ever be more lawyer barman. I sat at the bar. You got the spook, PC? He asked. You weren't as a catcher's mitt, I suppose my exhaustion showed. I won a hundred bucks for nothing. I can't let it go. I told Frankie about the case, the threatening letter sent to Connor Green. How he assumed it was related to his bootlegging and his suspicion of Redstone Stable. The story took longer than I wanted, Frankie showing genuine interest by asking many questions. When I finished, he threw me into whiskey sour and had been staring. I'd been staring. Stirring. It took a large gulp and gave it a gave me a sigh as thanks. Well, Green's case is better than most of what you're given, he said with some enthusiasm. At least it's not more than an adultery bunk. Sure, I replied, but I started with a goal in mind. What's the point in helping a man like Green? 
Frankie clicked his tongue on his teeth. Lawyers or priests, why did it matter? Let me ask you, are you are your clients have you have no uh, what type? Sorry, I, I read that all wrong. <laughs> Frankie clicked his tongue on his teeth. Lawyers or priests, why did it's why is why is it matters? Okay, that's an accent thing, I guess. Uh, let me ask you, are you, are the clients you have now the types you want to help? I admit they weren't. I admit they weren't. I told him that I wanted more from the, my detective life. It could be that Green's case shoot your career forward, Malone. I sighed and stared down at my drink. But my daze was interrupted by the basement door opening and then slamming shut. A small, bluttering woman began marching towards me. She looked younger than... She no longer than 25 and was a few inches shorter than my 5'6". I thought her gray trench her gray trench coat was too large for that small frame, which was when I realized it was exactly like the, the one that had belonged to Lewis. God damn it. She hurled insult at me a while and I could do was sit and take it until she ran out of gas and started breathing heavily. I set my drink in on the bar and looked at her in the eyes. I inserted a hello. I'm Phyllis Malone. How can I help you? Accompanied by a smile as genuine as I can muster. That knocked her off her balance. She stumbled over to her next few words and I added N. You are... The flame returned to her eyes between clenched teeth and she hissed. I'm the wife of that bum who sneaked into your bed. I asked, The cat? The cat? But humor wasn't her angle. She laughed into another poetic stanza. And he just left your sty this morning, she finally ended. And that was when I gathered she was Connor Green's wife. Mrs. Green, I'm a PI, not a home wrecker. I don't think your husband, in the line of his business, would want to bed with a dick. With a dick, nah, anyhow. Her look was pure incredib incredulity. A woman in that line of work? She questioned. I don't believe it. Prove it. Oh, damn it. Do I have any proof? What? Uh, Green's letter, Icebox. Notebook. No notebook now. Filled in the brim. I wrote everything down, even the minor details. They come useful. Show to her. Open my notebook and flip through the pages. You see, Mrs. Green? This is what I do. There's not much more I can show you to prove it. It still took more coaxing for her to believe me, but eventually she came around. She seemed gratefully that I explained it to her. Apparently, she had seen her husband leaving my apartment. And distrust, she, th she had followed me all the way to Frankie's basement and decided to confront me. I suppose I lost my head after I thought it I'd seen, she said, and she began to cry. Frankie even, Frankie, ever chivalrous to a dimpled, dimpled girl, came around the bar and held her up. Now that's all right, Mrs. Green. Why don't I hail you a cab and send you on back home? She agreed and then walked together up the stairs. When Fra Frankie returned, I said to him, You're turned night real quick. You turned night real quick, he snorted a laugh. Oh, hell. He can't have that siren in here. With a, a torture yelling like that, I even street buggers would have come. Every street bugger would have come down here to, to her rescue. Mrs. Green is a torch singer? Well, I learned she was a Mrs. Connor Green just now when she came in here. I'd only seen her at little Fanny singing lead for the jazz band at the Tin Spoon. The Tin Spoon? I said, Tiny Paul's joint. That's where Green is selling his liquor. Say, you think there's where she she met her husband? I laughed. You're the real salute, Frankie. He made a sarcastic bow. I shook my head. You're really telling me you escorted her our little torchlight out to avoid a bit of uh, hot water? Frankie flushed and said, What are you talking about, Malone? I was never good with emotions, but it was plain to Frankie he had instantly fallen for the girl. Instantly fallen for the girl. So, what if you, I had more to squeeze out of her, I asked. What more could you possibly want from Lil Fanny? She can't eat, She can't have anything to do with Green's mess. Uh, do I have anything to contradict? 
Uh, Green's letter. The day before he came to me, Green received a written letter that read, End your game or you will end you. It was signed with only a small black hand. Bottom corner. Hmm. Newspaper of the floor, headline to catch it, then landing the red mana sweeping, okay. Sure, uh, okay, what more could you possibly want from Lil Fanny? You couldn't have anything to do with Green's mess. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't. I considered it Frankie's point. Maybe she was unrelated to this case. I shrugged and stood up from the bar stool. The bar stool was crooked and worn. My usual one was in the center of the room. I could sit on it for hours if Frankie had a, a yarn to spin. Of course, the sauce helped to keep me in place. Once I'd asked Frankie to lend me some cash from the red shirt, he growled so fiercely that I could decide not to ask again. I didn't think his employer would notice before I got it back. Maybe he just wanted to save me from myself. Makes sense. This ball showed a California bear with a words Bohemian type in block letters underneath the I dubbed the bear had ever heard of Bohemia, but he did look carefree. Frankie, was there anything else? If Frankie was still behind the bar, if I was stuck on the case, I was longer it might have been helpful. Let's see if I got anything more I can talk to him. Look at Frankie, what's eating you kid? Ask about notes, I guess. I wonder a lot how I could get more dirt on Green's bootlegging. Frankie thought about it too. He offered, well, Green's working with Tiny Paul's on this scheme. If I were to buy from news a new source, I'd have to try it. Get a taster. I continued his thoughts. There is likely a sample of Green's stuff laying around the tin spoon. That makes sense. Maybe I can ask Paul about whatever booze I find in there. He nodded. I thank him for his advice. Never mind. I turned back to Frankie, never mind, I said, and swiveled to my seat away from the bar. Okay, I guess we're going to leave here. Let's leave the bar. The worn stair led to the outside world. Leave the bar. I was heading up the stairs when Frankly called after me. So what are you going to do? Uh, I'd been thinking about Lil Fanny. I've been thinking about Lil Fanny. I suppose even Mobster had people who cared about them. And she's been wearing Lewis' old jacket. So perhaps Green and Lewis had been closer than I realized. I guess I'll take Connor's Green's bait, I replied. I've got nothing better on my on the stove, and he might he might need to help the help. Something still stinks though. Well, what's your plan? Frankie asked. The way I see it, I have three goals right now. Green hired me for a job. Find the guy who wrote the letter. That's the basic part. But you want more, asked Frankie. I nodded. Green's a shady character. I have to learn about him. Who is this guy? D dig in his past. I can't go back to him blind. And then there's something about his bootlegging. How does Green get a connection like that? What's his source exactly? Sque squeezing that lemon might give me more juice. That sounds alright, he replied. So where is it you're off to? I've got three leads. That bootlegger stable where Glenn claims to him the letter. The tin spoon lounge where I might learn more about Green's rum running machine and mrs green who could give me more dirt on her husband frankie nodded his approval well if you're ever stuck come back and see me you can never solve anything without talking it over i smiled and went up the stairs i was dabbing where to go next sudden cover sample bar to the green's house uh i think i'm gonna leave this one here for now uh if, if it continues i might make another video about it so we'll go from there so thank you so much guys for watching hit that like button subscribe to now tell me what you link uh what if you like the video in the comments below uh sorry it's a lot of reading but i enjoy these type of stories it's uh forms a good narrative uh choose your own adventure type thing i'm really enjoying it uh yeah so if you guys like it leave it in the comment below what you think what what you think is going on in this story uh, if you've played it already, already know, please don't don't spoil it in the comments. I would really appreciate that. But uh, also follow me everywhere, me time gamer, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, and right here, YouTube.com/slash me time gamer, where I post a new video every day of the week, Monday to Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. 
But thanks so much guys for watching, and I will see you next video. Keep on keeping on.